Good afternoon. Could I have your attention? Come on over. You can scooch up a little bit closer. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Could I have your attention, please? Okay. I want to welcome everybody to our kickoff event celebrating National Public Health Week. I want to start by talking about the importance of, the, of public health right here in St. Louis County. And then I'll introduce Dr. Kanika Cunningham, our Director of Public Health for a historical perspective of the department and some a special recognition of one of our public health pioneers. The Department of Public Health led the county response to the COVID-19 pandemic, which began three years ago last month, filling our hospital ICUs and our emergency rooms and taking the lives of 3,772 St. Louis County residents. And one of our most important contributions to the pandemic response has been providing free COVID vaccinations to the public. And last year, the, Depublic, the Department of Public Health administered 18,000 vaccine doses. And together with our partners, our efforts have helped to ensure that more than 68% of county residents are fully vaccinated, making St. Louis County number one in the state. Of course, the uh, Department of Public Health's contributions go uh, far beyond COVID. In fact, we are one of the few public health departments that run clinics and provide direct care to patients. We are the safety net for many in our community who have little or no access to health care, no health insurance. And we treat more than 22,000 patients each year at our four permanent clinics. Those clinics are here at the John C. Murphy Health Center, the North Central Community Health Center in Pine Lawn, and the South County uh, Health Center in Sunset Hills, and the Bus West, Buzz Westfall Justice Center. St. Louis County created the Prescription Drug Monitoring Program, or PDMP, back in 2017, with 14 participating jurisdictions. And I'm proud to have led those efforts when I was on the St. Louis County Council. And today, 75 jurisdictions in Missouri, covering 85% of the state's population, are participating. Last year, Missouri became the, first, the last state in the country to set up a statewide prescription drug monitoring program. The state is expected to take over the county's monitoring program later this year. The Department of Public Health recently updated and unveiled its Substance Use Action Plan, which serves as our frame, framework for the response to the deadly opioid epidemic. Last year alone, the Department of Public Health distributed 1,500 Narcan kits to the public and administered more than 1,800 Narcan doses to our residents of the jail. Under our action plan, we um, intend to dramatically expand our efforts and we have new resources for the fight. Thanks to a $45 million settlement with the state and St. Louis County with our opioid manufacturers. And the county has already received $4.8 million of those funds. The total amount of this settlement will be distributed over 18 years. And we'll be strategic with how we deploy the resources and we'll update our substance abuse action plan to help frame our priorities. And there are more opioid lawsuits yet to be settled with pharmacies, so we don't know yet the full amount that we'll receive to help with prevention and treatment in St. Louis County. But having a committed fund reserved for those efforts will help us make a real impact on this public health crisis. So looking ahead, the Department of Public Health is finishing its application to again be accredited by the Public Health Accreditation Board. It's also finalizing the transformation to become a federally qualified health center lookalike, a status that will help us attract more federal funds to help with reimbursement for the care that we provide to our residents. 
these health centers, often referred to as FQHCs, receive a special reimbursement directly from the U.S. Department of Health and Senior Services. One of the challenges facing the Department of Public Health is its infrastructure needs, especially at the medical examiner's office at the North Central uh, Community Health Clinic in Pine Lawn. We're studying ways of addressing those needs for our future. And I know this is something that members of our county council recognize as an important matter, and I agree. It's important also that we take a moment to highlight the work of our public health departments here and across the country. Before and during COVID, health departments continued to run clinics, provide vital screenings, testing, and frontline health care to thousands of residents who are uninsured or underinsured. And that's what they continue to do as COVID finally becomes less of a threat. And public health officials took heed and received threats for simply doing their job during the pandemic. Public health is vital to our overhaul health of a community and without public health departments, our most vulnerable residents would have no access to health care. Outcomes would worsen and more people would get sick. More people would miss their vital screenings that could have saved their lives. I applaud the work of the, de uh, the Department of Public Health and healthcare workers and healthcare departments across the country. At this time, I'd like to recognize Dr. Cunningham to say a few words and uh, take us through the rest of our program today. Dr. Cunningham. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much and thank you again, Dr. Page, for being here and for celebrating um, National Public Health Week with us. So thank you all for attending National Public Health Week, which is always observed on the first week of April. I'm here at St. Louis County Department of Public Health. We are celebrating 117 years of serving St. Louis County residents. As we kick off this event, I share with my employees this year, this will be a year of recovery and rebuilding. Um, unfortunately, the pandemic um, wrecked havoc on our communities, on our healthcare workers, our public health departments. So we are moving towards recovery and rebuilding. This week, we are celebrating our history as an organization, the great work of my staff, and our service to St. Louis County residents. Public health is more than COVID-19, and it's the science and art of preventing disease, prolonging life, and promoting health through organized efforts so those system changes, informing choices, partnering with community and individual partnerships, working with our grassroots workers, those who are, who are truly on the front line of this work. I cannot stress the importance of relationships and what that means to me as a director and to my department. I would like to start with a brief reflection of our history, because as we know, revisioning our history can motivate us for the present as well as for the future. So as we kick off National Public Health Week, um, in addition to my new leadership role, we're going to celebrate our history and move forward with positivity, building those relationships, and continuing to serve our community. So a little bit with DPH, we are the largest public health department in Missouri. Dr. Page already mentioned we have our own clinics, as well as we provide the medical services at the jail, and we also have our own medical examiner's office to serve not only St. Louis County, but multiple jurisdictions. I'll talk about those as well. Dr. Eggers became the first health officer in St. Louis County, serving part-time in this role in 1906. Two decades later, DPH became a full-time health department with a grant of just $3,600 from the state in 1926. At that time, we employed six employees in one room off office at the courthouse. Five years later, in 1931, St. Louis County Government Hospital was opened, and soon the county health department and county hospital were placed under the operation of the same official. In 1951, the first permanent health clinic operated by the health department, it was outside of the county, but it was located in Kenlock. In 1973, the county hospital and county health department were merged and redesigned under the leadership of Dr. William Benton as his first health director, and I'll talk more about that. Today, we are mandated to operate by charter, providing anyone, regardless of ability to pay and access affordable health care. Our services are countywide and include providing health promotion and research, clinical services, sexual health services, environmental lab, including pollen and mold and lead testing, animal care and control and vector control, 
substance use prevention, provide health care to patients in a Buzz Westfall Justice Center, dental services, WIC programming, medical examiner's office and death reports and toxicology, hotel and restaurant inspections, pool inspections, community health workers, and much, much, much more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> DPH went from serving a population of 100,000 in 1920 to over 1 million a century later. Last year alone, DPH served more than 22,000 patients in 2022, as Dr. Page mentioned. And since the 1950s, DPH has operated an environmental lab. And during the nuclear bombing, we tested, in the 1950s, our lab workers actually tested the milk for strontium-90 as well as iodine-131. DPH went from no COVID in-house testing to over 500 samples a day in five months and we reduced testing costs by 2.8 million. Last year alone in 2022, our environmental lab had a record year of processing 59,379 tests on 48,685 clinical and environmental samples. In 1969, St. Louis County became the first county in the state to convert from a coroner system to a medical examiner system, and we hired Dr. George Ganter. And 20 years later, in 1988, Dr. Mary Case became our first female chief medical examiner. In 2022, Dr. Gershon Norfley, who's here, became our first black male chief medical examiner in St. Louis County also in the region, um, as well as the only black chief medical examiner in the state of Missouri. We now have five medical examiners serving St. Louis County, Jefferson County, and St. And St. Charles County with medical examiner services. In 2018, in collaboration with St. Louis County government leadership, DPH declared opioid use disorder and overdose a public health emergency and published an opioid action plan, um, demonstrated as uh, the substance use action plan, which would be our, our uh, foundation, Dr. Page, Dr. Page mentioned. In 2020, DPH led a comprehensive response to COVID-19, including a multifaceted efforts in public awareness, in education, surveillance, and disease response, policy making and enforcement, and provision of diagnostic te testing and vaccination services. So what is DPH future? In 2021, DPH lost, launched our 2025, 2020, 2025 strategic plan, where we identify priorities areas of championing equity, data innovation, workforce investment, and transformational operations. Dr. Page had mentioned at DPH that we'll apply for our accreditation again this year. We have a newly revitalized Champion Equity Committee, which will roll out many new projects, including health equity trainings, a health equity framework for integrating equity considerations into all programs and practices, and more structured ways for DPH to work in closer collaboration with community members. We have a new workforce development plan will be rolled out highlighting plans to invest in workforce to make all of DPH work possible. And again, our FQHC lookalike services um, that will be applying for that accreditation later today. So I would like to conclude to talk about Dr. William Benton. And I must share uh, one of my employees, I think she's hiding back there, Dr. Uh, uh, Ms. Myrna. I had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with her. She's been an employee of DPH for 46 years, and she has worked under every health director at the county. So of course I had to meet with her. <laughs> I heard she's shy, but, <laughs> and she shared with me, she uncovered some of the, uh, the history, and she shared with me um, about Dr. Benton, and so I started taking notes, and I was like, I didn't know about this, I didn't know, I've been in St. Louis all my life, I didn't know about this, so of course I had my team to do some digging around, and we looked at old St. Louis Post-Dispatch archives, we contacted the St. Louis Metropolitan Medical Society to get his first inaugural speech, um, as well as their write-up in a magazine article. So the deeper and the more I learned about Dr. Banton, it's amazing how his vision that was back then is the same vision that a lot of us have in place now with health promotion and providing quality care. And um, it was just a lot. I was amazed reading his inaugural speech back in the 1980s. So we want to take this time to honor and remember our first black director of the Department of Public Health. Dr. William C. Benton in 1973. It's been 50 years since he designed and implemented 
a new modern health department. And as his wife just shared with me, he received, he went back to school in the 1970s and received his master's degree from John Hopkins. And then he came here to St. Louis and St. Louis City had him for some time. And thankfully we were able to get him in St. Louis County. Uh, he was known to modernize healthcare from metropolitan areas. He became a trailblazer in so many areas, such as the TB program for St. Louis City, creating mobile units for treatment. A lot of us think that mobile units are new, but he was doing this back in the 60s. Um, I read that he became known for his warm humor and genuine concern for patients. I also read that he would do house visits after he left, and he put a light on top of his car because he was driving into neighborhoods to be able to see where he was going because he felt that providing that type of care and going into the homes was, um, it was that old school, that good medicine where you got a chance to know people and talk to them. <laughs> um, before coming to DPH, he interned at Homer G. Phillips Hospital and completed his residency training at Robert Koch Hospital for TB and respiratory diseases and received his MPH degree from John Hopkins in 1970. Um, and after this time at DPH, he pushed for the creation of the Missouri Department of Health um, by pushing for Senate Bill 53 to be pushed through, so he was part of the um, development and creation of the, of the Missouri Department of Health. He was elected the first black president of St. Louis Metropolitan Medical Society in 1987. Um, other things I must also um, honor, um, he was a um, um, he served our country as well, so in addition to what he did for our community. Um, Dr. William Benton was also the, um, he, was the he was our nation's first black Air Force Brigadier General in Medical Corps. Um, just think about that. In St. Louis, our first black Brigadier General in the country was here in St. Louis. He was a flight surgeon and served active du duty for Korea and Vietnam as well. So Dr. Ben was a dedicated public health leader, and I'm quite sure I'm probably leaving off a lot of firsts. This was a lot of last minute digging that we did. And his efforts to improve the health of all people are centered here in DPH's, DPH mission today. And I do wanna remind everyone of our mission, which is to promote, to protect, and improve the health and environment of our community. So thank you. Want to have one of the family members want to come up as well and say a few words before we move on to the next part? No. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, so we do have a proclamation as well. Well, this uh, this proclamation. All right, Dr. Cunningham, we'll move this back up. <laughs> I do have a um, a proclamation here, which outlines a few, I'm just going to say a few, of Dr. Bannon's incredible accomplishments. And I would encourage you to um, take a look over here at just two of the articles from the St. Louis Post Dispatch that summarize some of his accomplishments. But um, one of the cool things about being county executive is I get to recognize accomplished um, individuals in the history of our community. And I know Dr. Ban Banton's family is here today, along with his wife, Dr. Myla Banton, who I got to speak with for a little bit earlier today. Um, and I imagine Dr. Banton had the same advantage that I have. I have a famous physician wife that uh, makes people like me more than they would otherwise. Um, generally, I think folks like me until I make a decision, and then we have to, we have to deal with what happens next. Um, this proclamation recognizes the accomplishments of Dr. Bannon and says that I, Sam Page, St. Louis County Executive, proclaim April 3rd, 2023 as Dr. William C. Banton Day in St. Louis County. In accordance with um, National Public Health Week being April 3rd through 9th, given Dr. Banton's many contributions to public health and service in being St. Louis County's first director of public health. So thank you to Dr. Banton's family, to Dr. Myla Banton for um, being with us here today um, and allowing us to celebrate Public Health Week with you all in, in recognition of a very great historical figure in, in the history of St. Louis County. So thank you.
and there's one more thing. Um, so I um, told his family, and um, it was actually an idea with my staff, is that we don't have any picture of Dr. Benton um, in any of our locations. And so this is our, um, um, I plan to put his picture in all of our locations, and we're also going to name um, my director's conference room after Dr. Benton as well. So we want to acknowledge you all. Answer any questions, and uh, if there are any questions for me or Dr. Cunningham. Otherwise, uh, happy Public Health Week, and thank you to Dr. Banton and his family for celebrating this. And we look forward to getting to visit with everyone. We have some refreshments over here um, in the lobby. Thank you.